Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin Smith. Tonight, no reconciliation without justice. The foreign ministers of France and Germany head to Ethiopia to show support of the deal upon which rests hopes of peace and an end to two years of civil war in the East African country. Also, the urgency of the need to tackle climate change is undeniable. The world's never been recorded as being hotter. That's making life much harder for millions around the world. We hear from those in Kenya struggling through unprecedented drought. And videos from a Ghanaian top TikToker based in Senegal have been taking social media by storm. Hakeem is, as you can see, literally chasing fame. His comic skits have made him one of West Africa's most popular content creators. But first, the foreign ministers of France and Germany arrived in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, on Thursday morning to lend their support to the peace agreement signed last November to end two years of brutal civil war. Catherine Colonna and Annalena Baerbock stressed the importance of accountability as Ethiopia moves towards peace. Their visit came a day after fighters from the northern region of Tigray started surrendering heavy weaponry used during the conflict. Regional correspondent Vivian Wandera has more. The foreign ministers started their visit by meeting with Ethiopia's president and prime ministers on Thursday morning, and they talked about the war in Tigray and the implementation of the peace agreement that was signed on November 2, 2022, putting an end to a two-year civil war in Tigray. Parts of the agreement that have been implemented so far include the restoration of essential services like water and telephone services and the ease of access by humanitarian aid agencies to those who have been affected by the war. This visit is a show of faith in Ethiopia by France and Germany. However, Ethiopia's government will have to do more to ensure the ceasefire agreement is honored and that Eritrean troops leave the country as soon as possible. The troops have been accused by humanitarian rights defensibles of continued killings of innocent civilians even after the signing of the peace agreement. They were also here to show the European Union's commitment to revamp its, re to revamp its relationship with Ethiopia and help rebuild parts of the country. An agreement for the French Development Agency to restore power in parts of the country that were affected by the conflict will be signed between Ethiopia's government, the French Development Agency and Ethiopia's national electricity provider. A key part of this trip was a visit to the World Food Program warehouse where 50,000 tons of wheat donated by Ukraine and shipped to Ethiopia by France and Germany is waiting to be distributed. This shipment cost both France and Germany 14 million euros. By visiting the warehouse, the ministers were showing that they are ready to help the Horn of Africa and are working together on international matters. Vivian Wandera there for us. Now, Mali says that 14 of its soldiers have been killed in multiple extremist attacks in the centre of the country this week. Mali is still struggling to get a handle on a jihadist insurgency that's lasted over a decade. Security crisis has also frayed diplomatic ties. Our Sam Bradpiece tells us more from neighbouring Senegal. These latest attacks took place in central Mali on Tuesday, according to the statement from the Malian Armed Forces, which said that 14 of their soldiers were killed with improvised explosive devices. The statement says that the Malian army responded with ground troops and drone strikes, killing 31 terrorists. There have already been at least three other attacks perpetrated by militants in Mali since the start of 2023. As much as there is still some anti-French sentiment on the ground in Mali and certainly among the diaspora, many of whom live here in Senegal, it's undoubtedly true that since the French withdrawal in 2022, the security situation has deteriorated. Data from the UN suggests that 2022 was the deadliest since the crisis began in Mali more than a decade ago. The data also suggests that human rights violations have reached a peak incidence as well last year. Russian mercenaries stepped into the fold in Mali ever since the French withdrew last year and have committed a number of atrocities. Analysts say that this is fueling resentment and feeding into the Islamist insurgency, which is still gripping the country. Now, across the world, the last eight years have been the hottest ever recorded. 
The World Meteorological Organization has said that climate change saw average global temperatures uh, reach about 1.15 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. The last eight years have been consecutively ever warmer. The WMOs warned that targets of capping global warming at 1.5 degrees are growing ever more unlikely. Now, that is the limit at which the impact of climate change is reckoned to be still somewhat manageable. The world already facing a cascade of unprecedented natural disasters. Amongst the crises is the severe drought ravaging the Horn of Africa. Our correspondents report from Kenya. It is the fifth rainy season in a row that does not keep its promise in the Horn of Africa. Here, there is no more water or grass to feed the cattle. Millions of animals are perished in the country. In the past, we had cattle and goats here. But because of the drought, they're all dead. We have nothing left. The villagers no longer have a source of income. In the absence of state aid, the NGO acted sense to 1,800 households 40 euros each month. When we receive the money, we use it to repay our debts. And when everything is spent, we start asking for credit again. This river is dry, yet it should be filled with water in this season. The county does not have adequate equipment to consistently supply its population. A few kilometers away, another hamlet has just regained access to water. Thank goodness my children no longer have to travel very far to collect water and I have vegetables in my garden. The pumps are often too old. This NGO identifies villages in need and funds repairs. When we, we engage the Samburu County Water uh, Department, uh, they are able to come and uh, do uh, the repairs and restore uh, functionality of, um, of, the, of the boreholes. And through this, um, many people get access to water. In Maralal, the county capital, the authorities are aware of the needs. But this week, the truck supposed to carry out the repairs has broken down. County government does not have enough resources to, to cut off our repairs of all bores. So we, 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 we ask partners to come in and fill the gap that we cannot fill. In Kenya, 4 million people need humanitarian aid because of the drought, and more than 900,000 children are currently undernourished. Well, Morocco is pulling out of the African Nations Championship being held in neighbouring Algeria after Algiers rejected the kingdom's request for its football squad to fly direct on Morocco's national airline. The two countries are at odds over the future of Western Sahara, a territory that Morocco claims as its, as its own, but where Algeria backs an armed independence movement. Algeria closed its airspace to Moroccan aircraft in 2021 after severing diplomatic ties. And finally, a Ghanaian hairdresser called Hakeem has become one of the most followed TikTokers in West Africa. From his base in the suburbs of the Senegalese capital, Dakar, the young man's comic performances have been watched all around the world, including by our team. Take a look. Hakeem spends most days working as a hairdresser. The 24-year-old Ghanaian, who has lived in Senegal since 2019, likes to get creative on the job. This is a three-line fade. Here is the first, the second and the third. Styling here is very cool. It comes naturally to me. But Hakim is better known as a creator of viral videos on the social media platform TikTok. Most of his clips follow the same slapstick formula. Disguised with a trademark white beard, he chases troublemakers through the sandy streets of the Dakar suburbs. This act has made him a star. He brings joy and enthusiasm to the neighbourhood. He likes the kids and the kids adore him. They all follow him on TikTok. It's a pleasure to see the kids behind me, their parents too. It's great to have everyone behind me. I do my best. I put in a lot of effort and God has rewarded me. 
Hakim is one of the most popular TikTokers in Africa with 5 million followers and videos that notch up as many as 120 million views. He and his team hope to achieve global recognition. We will go far. We don't want to limit ourselves to Africa. We want to bring our art to the world. I dream of doing a chase scene stretching from Dakar to Paris. My friends and I speak about that every day, but we don't have the means to do it. One day we will, though. Hakim has trips planned to the Gambia and Côte d'Ivoire this month to meet adoring fans. Well, that's it for Iron Africa. Thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care. Welcome to Iceland, a country where equality is no empty word. I would love to be a stay-at-home dad. The baby gets like one year that it can spend with its parents, and it's divided into six months for dad, six months for mom. Here, little girls are taught not to be afraid. <laughs> and even if all is not perfect, Sometimes I am asked, how can you explain that in this e equality paradise that Iceland is, that uh, gender-based violence still exists? Icelanders are determined to serve as role models to the world. We still have a way to go, but we are on the path, I think, to the future of possibly gender equality. Iceland, a gender equality paradise. In Reporters, on France 24 and France24.com.